Morning, Frank. Morning, Hank. What's today's job? Hmm, I think she's talking about cells. Seriously? It says basils and eos. At least it will be colorful. Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie, and welcome to HEMED. Today, we will go over eosinophils and basophils to complete the five basic white cells. I have combined them in this video because the information on these two cells is less prolific than with the other WBCs. Eosinophils make up approximately 1-3% to of the total white cells in the peripheral blood. They have a circulating half-life of 18 hours, but can survive 2-5 to five days in the tissue. The name is derived from the characteristic orange-red secondary granules, which is due to the eosin stain that it likes to be stained with. The mature form typically has a bilobe nucleus, though three lobes is not unusual. Eosinophil stages of maturation are the eosinophilic myelocyte, which has a pale reddish-orange secondary granule along with azure granules and a blue cytoplasm, and the nucleus is similar in shape to its neutrophil counterpart. In the eosinophilic metamyelocyte, the secondary granules become more distinct and the nuclear shape resembles its neutrophil friend. And finally, the mature form. Usually, I will comment that there are precursor or immature eosinophils present instead of what stage of maturation the cell is in. When performing a differential, I will count all levels of maturity as an eosinophil, but follow your institution guidelines on the matter. Also, in regards to their immature forms, you usually should not see them in the peripheral blood. If you do, further investigation may be required. Eosinophils are an important part of immune regulation with a varied list of functions. They can act as antigen presenting cells and have the ability to rapidly secrete preformed cytokines. They are an important factor in acute and chronic allograft rejection. They also regulate mast cell function and are a hallmark of allergic disorders such as asthma. During parasitic helminth infections, their production is increased and the eosinophil is capable of destroying these tissue invaders. There is also the possibility that they play a role in preventing reinfection of these parasites. Basophils make up 0-2% to of the total WBC population in the peripheral blood. They have a lifespan of 60 hours and are known for their basic stain-loving large blue-black granules that are present in the cytoplasm. The lobulated nucleus is usually obscured by these granules. Note that the granules are water soluble and may dissolve if the blood film is washed too much. If this happens, you will see a cell with a reddish purple rim surrounding what look like vacuoles. Basophils and mast cells are two cells with morphological and functional similarities but the basophil is considered a true white blood cell since maturation occurs in the bone marrow. Mast cell precursors leave the bone marrow and use the blood as transportation to the tissues where maturation will occur. The basophil derive from progenitors that are in both the bone marrow and the spleen. Okay, to be honest with you, since there are so few of them, they are hard to observe Therefore, there isn't much information on their development. In reality, this is the one cell type I don't have a lot of images, which is why this section isn't as image heavy as other videos. Like their development, basophil function is also not understood well. Now you see why this didn't get its own video. Basophils function in both innate and adaptive immunity. They can release large amounts of helper T cell cytokines and can stimulate B cells to produce IgE, the immunoglobulin associated with allergies. Basophils are also the initiator of allergic inflammation through the release of cytokines. They are involved in helminth infections through enclosing toxic egg products and preventing tissue damage. They also promote eosinophilia in these infections. So today, we learned about eosinophils and basophils, how to identify them on the slide, and as much of their function as the world currently knows. 
In the next videos, we will continue our exploration of blood cells and associated disease processes. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Subscribe for future content. References available in the description box. Thank you for watching. Until next time.